Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this video uh, is not going to have any machining in it whatsoever. Um, it's going to, if you're, if you like seeing old iron um, and got 20 minutes to uh, to spin, you, you may get some out of it and enjoy it. If you don't like old iron and don't have 20 minutes to spare, you may be disappointed. Um, hoping somebody will get something out of it. I got a call from a gentleman that basically bought the contents and his job was to clean all the property up and get rid of everything. Um, everything was owned by an elderly gentleman that at one time had a machine shop. Uh, the story was he passed away in 2004. Um, not sure what his health was prior to that, but everything was pretty much closed up and untouched. Um, since then and who knows how long before that uh, so there was quite a bit of stuff I was interested in a um, couple other people were taking some stuff too there was a fair amount that was being scrapped out so a lot of the miscellaneous stuff I just had a hard time seeing it scrapped I figured I'll grab it go through it I can always get rid of stuff myself later First thing we pulled out of the shop, um, he sold the tractor, so we wanted to pull the shaper out before the guy took the tractor away. But I'm guessing sometime early 1900s, 20s, 30s maybe, but, but probably early 1900s. It's a John Steptoe shaper, uh, 16 inch. Um, it looks to be an actually pretty decent shape. Uh, 2,350 pounds and it's been converted uh, with the Reeves drive motor on the back it looks like somebody could pretty much squirt some oil on it plug it in and put it to work when we first started talking about what I would be interested in I told him I wouldn't be wasn't too interested in the step toe but I would be very interested in this Atlas 7b and he kind of threw a nutty price out and uh, for it and said uh, you got to take the uh, step toe with it and I said okay fair enough here's a 1941 Delta 768 they only made these like for maybe like three years it does not have the correct base so that base should have went on a 14 inch Delta bandsaw Now this one, this next one is a really nice piece. It ended up being either 1936 or 1937 Walker Turner 15 inch drill press uh, with the ship's wheel. When I first seen it, I was assuming that it wasn't correct, that it had, it had a small base. And I thought, well, that's a bench top base. Uh, the patent pinning there is key, but later i found out the very first year when they came out in 1936 had that smaller base in 37 you had the option of that base or you could pay i believe like eight dollars more for the larger round base and then by 1938 all of them had the larger round base but this is a very very uh you know you look past the crud very good shape now, if you're a Walker Turner person, you'll definitely right away notice the ship's wheel. Um, they are very desirable for for the older ones. Th this pulley is not correct, nor is this motor. It does not have the Walker Turner motor, and in the center pulley it does not appear to be an original. But checking the pulley out, the main drive pulley, other than sitting around in years of dirt, very good shape hard to see anywhere on it you know to speak of here it's shown one of the early Jacobs chucks that you know just have all the uh, the knurling on it
Yep, on the cover on the uh, spindle drive shaft, you know, sometimes they get, they come up missing or cracked or broke. It looks in really nice shape. Now notice the splines, unlike the Delta, the Delta's got like one dog drive that drives it, where the walker turners are splined, which I like lots better. Now this is something I wish they would have uh, put on all new drill presses. See all the peck marks here? That's just people with the drill bits drilling in. It's real common. Lots of drill press tables are full of little peck marks. This table here was protected quite nicely from the wood. Right there are a couple slight, slight little, little nicks. But otherwise, you know, the wood protected it table very nicely. A close friend of mine was over today looking at all my junk I drug home and when he seen this compressor he, he actually did tell me, you know, Gary you definitely have a problem. <laughs> what what can I say? I just I couldn't see it scrapped. It turns over and pumps air and I just couldn't see it scrapped. This little uh, oven here I thought was super cool, a little heat treating oven. Um, I actually plugged it in and one side was getting hot, it just wasn't getting terribly hot. So, uh, Berkeley, California. So I just need to play around with it a little bit, but I just thought, I thought it was cool. Now this blower appears to be in pretty nice shape I couldn't find any busted or cracked parts on it or no repairs on it but it is stuck so you know I take it you know it's a it's a project take a little bit to free up but once again in my truck or in the scrap bin and I just can't see that stuff scrapped Now here we just have a post drill. I think everybody pretty much knows what a post drill is, but exactly like it says, you just mount it wherever you got a post, and you just mount it up on a post, and, and it also is a really nice shape. Here what we got uh, made by International. It is a grinder, a portable grinding attachment for the uh, sickle bar blades, where you can just clamp it up and um, you know gr grind the knives right on the spot. Okay, this is a 400 pound swedge block for blacksmithing. Um, I personally don't come across them very often. I think they're harder to come by either, even than big anvils. And he was kind of at first thinking about possibly keeping it for himself, you know, but after a little, uh, after seeing how much I was getting from him, you know, he decided to let it go. These are, these are the small little DeVilbus compressors. They weigh a ton, but the Art Deco, they're just super cool. Uh, the Good of the Land, they restored one. 
um, a while. Well, I forget how long ago, but they got a video of restoring one. Beautiful job. But my boy, he, uh, he wanted to try this out, see if it works. And as you can see, it works quite nice. Now this one's pretty cool. This is a Rottler Boring Bar, a CA model. I'm not sure the vintage. They go way back. Um, but it's going to clean up real nice. You can see the last time it was used, they packed grease on, smeared grease on it. All I did is sprayed a little brake, brake clean on a rag and it just wiped right off. So it's going to clean up really good. When I first stumbled across that on the bench, I couldn't, I didn't see the tooling with it. And the tooling is pretty important. And then we found the uh, found the box. I pulled everything out of it, and it appears like that everything uh, is there. The original box and uh, all the tooling to go with it. There was, you can see it on the top. There's one of the arms uh, that was brazed up uh, right at the top of the picture. Right there, you can see where he brazed it up. But otherwise, you know, they look like they'll clean up really well. Now this one was very interesting, an old snap on ratchet and it's patent applied for. They don't even have a patent on it yet. I've never seen one like that. And the whole the whole socket set was there and I just kind of took it on a wire brush on the grinder and just kind of cleaned it up a little bit and thing works great. I just thought it was pretty cool. I tried to do a little research um, but I'm thinking that that socket set could be somewhere between 20, 1923 and 1929. Now, I will be the first one to admit, you know, that most people probably just throw this thing away. Um, it's an old mechanical jack that's missing the top, that's all froze up. But I just kind of look at it as... You know, the possibilities for any kind of industrial art, I mean, yeah, if you use brick handle or, or sky's the limit, you know, so I just save it from the scrap pile if I can. Okay, this wooden box here, I already yanked the lid off. The, the top of it was all cracked up, so I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna mess around with trying to keep the, the box, but it was full of a lot of nice stuff. So I did kind of make them, well, I actually, I didn't make offers on anything. He'd throw out some price and I'd say, okay. And that's what happened here. And there was a lot of nice stuff that came out of it. This particular attachment, I got to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It is South Bend, South Bend laid. So, I mean, if somebody knows exactly what this is, I'd love to hear in the comments. It appears to have a number three taper, Morse taper. Just not sure what it is. Now just about every tool, every reamer, every tap, every drill bit was 
excellent shape. I, I don't think I, uh, I might have thrown a couple of broken taps away, but everything in this whole box was just super shaped. Now everything here on the table came out of that one wooden box and I kind of tried to sort through it and uh, separate it all but yes that one box was quite the haul on top are all special reams you know all small reams that are exact size couple tools there I'm not you know that's where I need Mr. Pete you know what is it this is an old model A Ford uh, tire pressure gauge which I thought was kind of but yeah there are a few pieces there that um, not sure exactly what what they do now that one Ryko uh, attachment right there there's a piece on the top of the table I think that went with it and then down on the ground there was a bracket from the late uh, 20s actually uh, it was clearly for boring something I don't know if it was for boring a small cylinder block or, or what now this box I think I grabbed right prior to the uh, scrappies grabbing it and throwing it in the scrappy that is LS Starrett uh, pieces and parts like I say, I just started going through. There's going to be, you know, like things like that. I, I'll keep old lot brass locks. And, so there'll be, there'll be a little bit in there that, that I'll definitely keep. Now, on this one, when I first looked at it, I thought, ah, okay, what's that? What's that? It's not a file handle. Uh, so kind of opened it up. And I thought, oh, is, are those screwdriver bits? But what they are is they're actually small little chisel heads. So I'm <laughs> I'm just assuming that it's just a small little hand engraver, metal engraver uh, tool. I thought it was kind of neat. Here's a couple items I've already cleaned up. One of the old Craftsman uh, machinist hammers. I, I get enjoyment out of taking a tool that uh, some previous person made a living using it. And then uh, decades later, uh, cleaning it up and also start using it again. Um, I'd rather have that than a new hammer any day. Now this last clip is where you're gonna definitely think, oh man, he has lost it. He has a problem. And I admit, I have a lot of sorting out to do to decide what what I keep and what goes. But a lot of it, I just couldn't see it scrapped out. And, and a lot of it, too, I was grabbing uh, right before the scrappies. You know, and I thought, okay, well, if I decide to scrap stuff down the road, I can always do that. Lots of metal stock I always keep. On the ground right there, that's all solid brass rod. You know, of course, that stuff. The big wrenches, the, you know, I'll probably just clean those up and take them to work. Even the old McCola chainsaw, you know, he had both bars, it turns over, it has compression. But the nice wedge block. But what's really cool too is this vise. It's a 150 pound uh, leg vise, seven inch wide jaws, which are in great shape. I have no idea the man to make. I couldn't see any uh, numbers on it.
One nice thing is I do have access to a couple really nice big wash cabinets and uh, and bead blast cabinets, which help uh, the cleaning up process. The uh, there will be a fair amount of sorting, you know, figuring out what I'm gonna what I'm gonna keep, what I'm not gonna keep. But I think all in all, it, w it was a, a nice fun haul. I enjoy messing around with some of this stuff. Do I have a problem? Of course, I will be the first one to admit. I have a problem but it's a fun problem I get enjoyment out of it um, I appreciate anybody that take took the time to uh, watch the video I hope they got a little enjoyment out of it um, anyway I appreciate it and thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing